Alrighty, so hello all, it is I, the Sivart, here with a uh, rather simple tutorial. I got a request on my Facebook page for a tutorial on how to um, make a 3D gun in in your game. So, a couple of years ago I made a tutorial on how to just take an image of a gun on your screen so that you can, you know, um, use that as a visual representation of a gun and then you could shoot things. But obviously, in newer games, that doesn't really, um, that's not really a, a reliable method, uh, as it looks horrible. So, 3D guns is the way of the future, and now I will show you how to do that in the simplest possible way I think I can. So, here we have um, this game here. So, what we have here is uh, just something I quickly threw together here. As we can see, we have an M16 gun here. Uh, the model was made by my cousin. So, yeah, it, it, it's a pretty awesome uh, gun model. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's just a little room here. And the gun, as we can see, is 3D. I made it kind of jiggle around when you move your mouse so that we can actually see that it's 3D. And also, when you hit the right mouse button, obviously it zooms in. And then, as we can see, it actually uses the model's scope as a zoom in feature there. So, yeah, <coughs> this is a rather simple, simple thing to do. Yet uh, requires way too much trial and error. So pretty much the the method that we're going to be using is simply um, drawing the model next to your screen, right? So that it'll rotate around with with your movement, and then yeah, it, it really is just for visual looks. So you're just drawing a model next to your screen, and I'll show you how exactly I end up doing that. Okay. okay, so here we go into the actual game itself. Um, this is Studio, by the way. We go into Control. I've tried to label everything nice because I will be giving you guys the editable example in the description below. So Start 3D. Um, we just we just have some simple stuff here. D3 Start, you know. Um, I added some anti-aliasing if your graphics card will support it. Um, display mouse set. I freeze the mouse in the center of the room. Now, the reason I did this in the creation event is so that by the time I actually start um, using or moving around the mouse, then like, because because often you'll start your game and then your mouse won't be in the directly the center, and then it'll just jump your view around before you even start, which is a little annoying. So anyway, it sets lighting and some ambient lighting, um, and initializes some variables and loads in the models. Now something I should note, um, Studio's loading in of models is quite a bit different. Uh, what you have to do is you have to do included files. So we have fence.d3d and m16.d3d and then it'll actually stick them in a folder when you install the game. So all I have to do in the loading is just stick the file name directly. I don't have to add any directory whatsoever, it'll just automatically have it there. It's pretty awesome. So then in step we have controls, you know, you have to be able to move around and then scope in and out. Simple algorithm for scoping in and out, just um, making a variable smaller and bigger. Uh, we refresh the lighting position, the border. This is so that I can't go outside the room. And then these lag varies here, what they do is they're kind of what makes the gun hang behind a bit and jiggle around when I move the camera. It's probably not the best looking method, but it is a method that, you know, accurately um, shows off the power of drawing a 3D gun in your game. So then in the draw event, this is where all the good stuff is, obviously. We have move camera, move camera, you know, this is pretty standard variables here for uh, just getting your camera to move FPS style. And we draw the camera. Now here's some interesting stuff, just a little bit. Um, I, I am adding the the uh, scope in because when we scoped in, it also zoomed in a bit. So the angle here is normally 45, but then I I added it so that it would be minus the scope in variable, so that when you scoped in, it would zoom in. Anyway, fairly simple to zoom. Um, so then we draw the sky, which is just an ellipsoid. And we draw the floor, which is just uh, actually to make the good lighting. I draw a whole bunch of floors because just one floor does bad lighting. 
um, draw fence once again that's just drawing a whole bunch of model fences around the around the perimeter of the room and then finally we get into draw gun this is the interesting bit here so uh, these variables up here if scope in smaller than or equal to zero these are just you know the scope in variable setting a boundary to that fairly simple and then all oh, this this chunk right here this is all the uh, the lag variables so this is what makes the gun hang behind so yeah, it's it's not necessary and I highly recommend you making up your own system and then um, yeah so here's the actual drawing down here d3 transform set identity and then we add the rotation here so pretty simple um, d3 transform add rotation y so we have the uh, the z direction so looking up and down and then we have the add rotation z which will be the direction of where where you're facing so now the interesting part the actual offset of the gun itself this is the part that requires way too much trial and error you'll want to go d3 transform add translation xyz okay you won't want to add the offset there because then when you're turning around then you'll have weird problems with with it anyway in other words it won't keep its ratio um, to your direction if that makes sense it'll stay five pixels to your right not based on where you're looking but actual five pixels to your right so it, yeah it's just it's just messed up and it won't stay the same place on your screen so XYZ there and then here's where you set the offset in the X Y and Z in, in, in this section because then if you put them in here then it'll maintain ratio with your rotation so we draw the model with the texture and then so these numbers the X the Y and the Z is the positioning of your gun so you'll just want to keep changing it around until you have it in the place that you want it so I would recommend getting a small gun model you don't want it to be very big otherwise when you walk up to a wall the gun will be sticking in the wall and that's no fun so I recommend it small and then you just keep fiddling around with these numbers here and there you go so the reason I have a bit more here uh, the scope in variable is because obviously when I scope in I want the gun to move over so once again that's another bunch of numbers you have to troubleshoot to get in the exact right position that you want it to be but once once you get it all nice uh, once you get the numbers just working perfectly then you can actually use the gun the guns actual sights like the, the actual model itself which is way superior to anything else so well I guess I shouldn't say that but it's it, it is a really nice system and yeah it's, it's, a, it's a really neat effect it just takes a lot of trial and error in these numbers here okay so you can use the system exactly or you can make your own I recommend making your own but oh well so yeah that's pretty much it and then I draw the GUI it's just drawing the scope now it's nice is in studio here you don't have to do the draw set alpha anymore you just put it in the GUI uh, draw event which is really nice so it's it, yeah there we have it that's pretty much everything it really is that simple we just we just draw draw the gun so it's just these these numbers down here so I hope that clarifies up stuff that um, you are going to have to have some some knowledge ahead of time as to how to at least draw a 3D model in um, a th 3D game maker. But yeah, I don't know. It just takes some time. I suppose most people are stumped by the fact that if you stick it in here, or rather if you don't stick this here, the D3D Transform Add Translation XYZ, if you don't stick that there and instead you put the XYZ in here, then yeah once again you'll have that problem where you're rotating around and the gun isn't rotating with you and that's a major problem a lot of people run into so this should hopefully fix that so if you want to just download this and give it you know tweak it around yourself just to really get a good grasp on how it works and then you can um, uh, change around those numbers a bit to uh, fit your needs you know Anyway, I hope this was a very useful tutorial for you, and if you have any other 
tutorial requests or anything, you can put it on the Facebook page. Anyway, have a nice day.